Michael, uh, Jen brought up a great point uh, about Democrats uh, right now in a lot of key states. They just they have better better political athletes on the ballot in these states because Donald Trump has worked hard to let's just let's just call it what it is. I mean, he's worked really hard to get a lot of crazy uh, weirdos, freaks, ideologues, uh, these 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 hucksters on the ballot. And, and it, it's so interesting, you know, we talk about ideology, we, we, we talk about uh, economic trends. At the end of the day, uh, like Reverend Al, uh, you've run for office, I've run for office. Uh, you walk into a room and you know whether you own the room or not. You know if you're going to have to work harder or not. And candidates like Fetterman, uh, you know, uh, candidates like Tim Ryan, they're so much more attuned to that than, say, a Dr. Oz who lives in New Jersey and votes in Turkey uh, or, uh, you know, uh, J.D. Vance, who one day says, I love San Francisco. And the next day says, I hate San Francisco. I love <laughs> Silicon Valley. I hate. I mean, this is this does actually people go, well, when is this going to catch up with these people? Usually at the voting booth, right? It does, and it has, uh, and I think in, in, in large measure it will. Uh, I think uh, there are dynamics, political cross currents that I know, and I'm sure you know from your conversation with a number of Republicans, that a lot of the leadership did not want uh, to be in play this fall. They did not want to go into this fall having a discussion about abortion. They didn't want to go into this fall having a discussion about guns. And now here we are. They were very unhappy uh, that a number of the conservative states, Mississippi included, pushing forward uh, abortion uh, legislation that they knew would wind up in, in front of the Supreme Court. Um, so here we are. And now the leadership is, is hammered by candidates who are so whacked out, the voters are looking at them and saying, I can't do that. And, and policy positions that are untenable for a lot of Republicans to, to, you know, try to take advantage of. Michael Steele, thank you so much. Greatly appreciate you being with us. And I just, I just want to ask, uh, Jen, um, Elise said that she was looking closely at Pennsylvania. That's going to be a fascinating race. Uh, what race are you looking at? Michigan. I mean, I just, I, um, uh, it is, I think that Whitmer so could be, if she wins, she's sort of proof of concept of how you make your own weather, right? I, I think she has, she has a very distinct brand and at times in Michigan that has been to her detriment, but she has been able to separate from Biden more easily than others. I mean, at this point, I mean, I'm sorry to say it, but the president's numbers are so low, Democrats are able to separate from, from him um, uh, relatively easily. You need candidates that are just running the best race that they can with the best with the message that's going to work in their state, whether they're a challenger or an incumbent like um, like Whitmer. But if she can come back, you know, Tony Evers may have a harder time in Wisconsin winning re-election. Uh, Sisolak in Nevada may have a harder time winning re-election. They haven't done that kind of work that she's done to really define herself, have her have her own agenda, have her own record, and just and just constantly be hammering it. Um, she gets a lot of blowback, but you know, I think that's that's the that's the price of uh, of admission and winning in a in a tough in a tough midterm. Elise, what about the key issue for you in 2022? Donald Trump, is he going to motivate <laughs> Democratic voters? No. I mean, that's just the gift that Democrats are waiting on. And you coupled with abortion, coupled with guns, and you, they want to stay. Democrats want to stay away from talk about inflation and. That gives them a really great outlet. Yeah, Reverend Al, what about you? Let, let me ask you both questions. What race are you looking at as, as a race you think will be a defining race for 2022? And what's the defining issue? I think that uh, I'm looking at Ohio. Really uh, very interested to see how Tim Ryan does because he is not in either the mode of what we call the woke crowd. Uh, and at the same time, he has been able to deal on the ground with what Ohioans are concerned about, which could be the model going into 24. So I think Tim Ryan and his race in Ohio, I'm particularly looking at. And again, I think the real overall concern of voters is looking at candidates that really understand 
where I am, how I'm living. This is the first election. I think that, you know, we can look at history, but this is the first election we've had since a pandemic in this country and since an assault on the capital of this country on a democracy. So a lot of what we're looking at, we're not realizing voters are voting with a different reality than they ever voted before. So a lot of the matrix are changing and I, I wanna see who gets it right because there's no book for them to read or study or no, uh, or no advisor they can get that can say this is how Lincoln did it. Lincoln did not have a pandemic and Lincoln did not have the preceding president lead an insurrection. So a lot of things yeah. are different. A lot of things are different. It's going to be a fascinating uh, race. I want to thank you all. Thanks for incre our incredible roundtable. Greatly appreciate your insights and hope to see you again soon. Coming up, a deeper look at the Supreme Court's monumental decision to overturn Roe v. Wade and how that is going to impact the vote. And we're going to speak with Democrat Stacey Abrams about her bid to unseat Georgia's Republican governor, Brian Kemp.